be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone here, everyone who ever lived, who is ever going to live, will all be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a level plane. Right? And if we're going to be standing there alone and completely naked, nobody will be there to support us. Nobody will be there to help us. The sun will be above our heads, and some of us will be in such a serious situation of distress that we'll be drowning in our own sleep. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect us from that. We're going to be completely alone. Our parents would have left us. They want nothing to do with us. Our children will have no idea who we are. They won't even remember. Everybody's sole focus will be their selves. They won't care about anything else. They'll only be focused on whether or not they're going to be placed in a good situation or a bad situation after the reckoning. All of our friends will have left us and all of the possessions that we had in this world won't help us at all. The only thing on that day that will help us is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So put yourself in that situation. You're standing, you're waiting to be, uh, you're waiting to be uh, judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have no idea what's going to happen. You have this intense stress and, and, and anxiety that's going on within you. You don't know what your outcome is going to be. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls you forward. Right? And in the hadith, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls you forward and if you were a person who recited the Qur'an, if you were a person who memorized and practiced it in their daily life, the hadith says that the Qur'an will manifest itself in front of you. Right? The Qur'an will talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will call out and say, Oh Allah, uh, adorn this person. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place upon you a crown of honor. And then the Qur'an will call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and say, Oh Allah, increase him in adornment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place upon your back a cloak of dignity. Right? You were naked before, you had nothing before. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts this on your back. And then the Qur'an will say, Oh Allah, uh, elevate this person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command you to recite, to read the Qur'an from what you know. And you will continue to recite, and as long as you recite, you will elevate in rank. Closer and closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's another hadith that says, the person will be called in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that person who memorized the Qur'an, who lived it in their daily life and practiced it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place a crown of light on their heads. And the light is so bright that it's brighter than the sun. Right? Think about it. You used to, back in your, in your daily life, when you were in this world, you recited the Qur'an in private. You stayed up during the night, and you prayed Qiyam and Layl, and you recited the Qur'an when nobody else was watching, when nobody else was listening. And you exerted yourself in order to memorize the Qur'an. And so, when nobody knew what you were doing in this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls you out in front of everybody. And He says, look at my slave, identify him by this crown of light that he has on his head. This is the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives those people who know the Qur'an. And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls forth that person's parents. And the parents are confused, right? They don't really have any attachment to the person at that point. They're just worrying about themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them forward. And He puts on their back a cloak unlike anything that's ever been seen in this world. Only we can imagine how, how much of an honor that will be on that day. And they're confused and they ask, why, why are we having this cloak on our backs? What did we do? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, this is because your son used to recite the Qur'an. Your daughter used to recite the Qur'an. They knew the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were intimate friends of that book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the people of Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us companions of the Qur'an, carriers of the Qur'an. So this is the reason why we've been having these competitions. Right? Yes, they'll, they'll be getting prizes inshallah and everything, but it's to motivate us, all of us here inshallah, to regain our attachment to the Qur'an inshallah. I think we're going to start um, with awards for the Adhan competition. Oh. This is for both of you. We want to... Uh, so, we're going to start with the Adhan competition, but before that we want to recognize all of the uh, judges who, um, who volunteered their time in order to help out with the competition. Um, the judges from the sisters were Hala Salama, Soha Atiya, and May Salama, and the brothers Imam Ahmed Azari, Farooq Muhammad, Abu Basit Khan, uh, Tamar Mahmoud, Khalid Al Wazir, and Muhammad Khatri. So the Adhan competition, a little bit about how it went. Uh, 
so there were different categories based on age groups, um, and all, all of the competitors had to give the adhan in front of our panel of judges, it consisted of five judges. Um, if after that the ballot was, was tallied, uh, their scores were marked down, and then if they did enough, if they did well enough to place it was top five, then they advanced to the next round and they had to give the Fajr adhan. Um, then after that we chose uh, our, our top rank of, of people who were um, equipped to give the adhan. So we'll start off with um, the youngest category, the 7 to 12 age group. Um, and if your name is called, if you're a brother, you can come up to the stage and get your certificate, inshallah, and your prize. If you're a sister, uh, your, your prizes are on the sister side, um, and you can come up, I guess, to the front of the people, so that, but there's a table with prizes, inshallah. Uh, so for third place, we have Musa Ahmed. Love, 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 love.
For second place, we had Esau Fun. Is Esau here? And for first place, we had Suleiman Baldi. Oh, here it comes. MashaAllah, Takbir. We'll move on to one juice uh, for the girls. For third place, we had Faiza Ashar. Second place, we had Zaina Buba. And first place, we had Hanifa Barber. Takbir. Wow. For the one juice category for Juz Amma, uh, for the boys, third place was Zaki Chowdhury. Yeah. Takbir. Oh. Oh. Second place, we had Zayn Hijazi. Zayn here. First place we had Amin Ahmed. We'll get their awards to inshallah. For the two juice category, so if this is any two ajza of the last five juice. We had for the girls, third place was Rihanna Alim. Takbir. Oh. <laughs> Second place was Noor Khan. Takbir. Oh. And first place was Hafsa Ghori. Takbir. Oh. For the boys, for third place, we had uh, Seiku Jalo. MashaAllah. Takbir. Oh. Second place we had Ibrahim Khan. <laughs> yeah, not him. And for first place we had Musa Ahmed. Oh, and he also 
also got, um, in addition to his trophy, we got him an iPod Touch. <laughs> For the 20 out of the category, we had a sister win, mashallah. It's Maryam Ashaq. She won first place. Takbir! 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 So she got a certificate, a trophy, um, and I believe a Beats pill, if you all know what that is. Bluetooth speaker. Now this is from the entire Qur'an. The entire Qur'an committed to memory, mashallah. For third place, we had Sakina Ishaq on the sister side, mashallah. Takbir! 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 Oh, I'm sorry, she got an iPod Touch. And Adam got an iPod Nana. That's what it was. For second place, we had Yusuf Adim. MashaAllah. Takbir! 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 And he got a GoPro Hero 3. Which is a... Uh, it's a hot thing right now. <laughs> For first place, MashaAllah, first place, this is combined category, the entire Quran between brothers and sisters. MashaAllah. This was Amira Ahmed. Takbir! 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 And she got a $300 gift card. $10 for every juice. So, um, for anyone else, that, that sums up who the, the individuals that placed and received awards. For anyone else that participated, they're still recognized as well. We're requesting that if you're here and you know you participated in the Quran or that competition and you did not get a certificate, um, Brother Ahmed Arafah here has them in his possession. So either after the after this ceremony or after the Salat, um, you can go to the, the conference room here um, outside the Salat to receive your certificate. Whether you're a brother or sister, I believe Sister May is on the other side. So. So all, okay, so all of the certificates are with Brother Ahmed Arafat, inshallah. So if you did not receive that. Um, and if there are any parents here of the children that, the children aren't here for the prizes that we had, um, you can receive them from us if you see myself or Brother Ahmed Arafat as well. Exactly. And we look forward, inshallah, to seeing more competitors next year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us all in knowledge of the Quran. Amen. And may He unite us with it and make it be an intercessor for our, uh, on, our day, on the Day of Judgment, inshallah, when we need the most help. Um, may He ignite the light of the Quran in our hearts. And may He also make us so that we always recite it very often. Amen. Amen.